If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 64 Start of the Call Razel, sup. Satoshi, whoa, someone's in an excellent mood today. Razel, hey. Excellent. I don't know what you mean. Satoshi, sigh you and your pretentiousness. Razel, look, I really don't. Satoshi, oh please. At least hide that disgusting smugness in your tone if you are going to play the sarcastic humble card on me. Razel, oh. Hee <laughs> hee my bad. Old habit. Satoshi, dumbass. So, how was it? Razel, how was what? Satoshi, your ass being hunted by thousands of players for almost a month? Razel, oh, that? Well you know, sh asterisk t, what else? Satoshi, it's your own doing anyway. Already warned you about it, but you didn't listen. Razel, well, I'm not saying I regret it happened. But it doesn't change the fact that it's a pretty sh asterisk t experience overall. Satoshi, really? How so? Aren't you the guy who gained the most from this event? Razel, gained the most from this? Ha! Huh. Is that supposed to be a joke? Satoshi, did you not? Razel, you wish. I barely got any benefits at all due to that stupid debuff. All I gained through all of this was mostly the rewards from my main quest. Benefited the most my ass. I even suffered a loss due to the huge amount of resources I needed to repair the cities each time they were destroyed. My stockpile was almost exhausted due to that. Satoshi, well, like I said, your own doing. Razel, whatever. Also, why is it me? Aren't you guys the ones who benefited the most from this? Satoshi, whoa, wait a minute. You thought all the sleepless nights I needed to pull just to make sure nothing goes to sh asterisk t during this event was more of a benefit for me? Razel, cry about it. You probably earned enough checks anyway to wipe those tears. I mean, I could only imagine how much you guys earned just from the sale of that god-defying totem bullsh asterisk t alone. Given how many people decided to join in on my hunt quest. Satoshi, well. I plead guilty. Razel, yeah that's what I thought. Satoshi, going back on the main point though, how was the fight? Razel, what fight exactly? You know I've been to many lately. Satoshi, what else? Of course, I'm talking about your last fight with Bob the world enemy. Razel, oh him? Well, decent I guess. Satoshi, wow. Decent? That's pretty rich coming from a guy like you who always talks trash about every player you fought. Razel, well I'm not saying he is good. But it's the most entertaining fight during these past months, to say the least. Satoshi, really? How so? Razel, wait, didn't you guys watch the fight happen live? Satoshi, nope, only the others. Not me. I was the one who was tasked with preventing the server from crashing down during your fight, especially when you said that you might finally use that ring. Had to put our guards up for that you know? That ring literally alters the server to some degree. Razel, I see. But there's no way the other devs didn't record it. Satoshi, I just got off work okay? Watching a video that lasts a couple of hours is the last thing I would want to do right now. Just give me a break and tell me the damn fight already. Razel, sigh well, it's not much. I mean, compared to others, it's just a bit hard given how bloated his stats are. Satoshi, oh yeah. Now that you mentioned it, that guy's stats is really impressive. So impressive in fact that almost all the other devs placed their bet on your loss due to that. Razel, a bet happened? You should have told me. I could have extorted more from your, kind. Satoshi, you don't need to. Money is probably the last thing you need anyway. Razel, money is still money. Only a crazy person would not want to have more of it. Satoshi, well. I could only agree. Razel, anyway, who did you bet on? I'm hoping not me. Satoshi, of course you. It's free money at that point. Razel, what a boring person. Satoshi, have funny enough, the others said the same thing. Telling me that with those stats, a couple of hits will be enough to easily kill you. Razel, you should have believed them. Satoshi, as I should. But I chose to be practical. And knowing you, I kind of figured that you would win. Razel, did you trust me that much? Gosh I'm touched. Satoshi, you wish. 
But, well, I already saw the guy before. And, how do I put this, when it comes to battling, he's not the brightest. And by that I mean, amongst you world champions. Razel, fair enough I guess? I mean, that guy is so bad that I started to feel bad for him midway through our fight. Talk about long preparation just to end up like that. Satoshi, well he's not that bad, just good enough to put him within the top rankings. But, paired against a guy like you who's pretty much a battle maniac, his overwhelming stats will be useless. At least that's how I predicted it, which is what exactly happened it seems, fortunately. Razel, it's not that useless though. I mean, thanks to his insane defense, the fight became excessively harder to finish than it should have been originally. The fact that he also possesses a power that can easily end me the moment I made one mistake, made my guard in its maximum throughout the whole fight. Satoshi, hmm. So I guess it wasn't as easy as you made it sound to be. Razel, never said it was easy. Satoshi, really? Razel, you think? I used that ring which I never used before. I brought out all of my summons to help me. Use a bunch of ultimate skills that I usually don't like using. Used some one-time usage items that you know I don't like doing. I also exhausted lots of my mana. Not to mention that our fight literally took almost an hour. Do you think that sounds like an easy fight? Satoshi, that's why I'm asking. I didn't watch the fight remember? Razel, well now you know. Satoshi, geez, now that you said that it gave you a hard time. I think I would really need to watch that fight now. Razel, why? Does watching me suffer make you sleep well at night or something? Satoshi, maybe. I mean, seeing you have a hard time against a player, which I have never seen before, would surely be quite a scene. Razel, then have fun knocking yourself out with it. Satoshi, maybe later. Anyways, I was already spoiled about the ending of your fight, and also, about what happened after that. And gotta say, even though I kinda expected it already, I still can't believe that you just did all those people like that. Such a dick move in my opinion. Razel, what do you mean? Satoshi, I mean sure, the hunting quest ended at the same time your fight with Bob was done. But logging off immediately after that? Man you could have entertained the tons of players waiting eagerly for you outside at least. Razel, and what, die? No thanks, I'm good. Satoshi, you really have no sympathy for the guys you've been with for at least a month hey? Huh? What a heartless fellow. You didn't even appreciate all the effort they did just to kill you. Razel, you do know that outside of the world maker, I'm pretty much f asteriskied right? And that I would not be able to log out unless I'm in a safe place or inside a city, which in that scenario, would be impossible to find. Satoshi, obviously, I'm just trolling here. Relax. Who did you think allowed you to log out while inside the world maker, which was not originally possible, hey? Razel, B asterisk TCH that's your job. Satoshi, all I'm saying is that you should take a look at the thousands of players you left behind. I've sent you a link. Razel, wait, let me. PFT. Satoshi, see how horrible you are. Look what you did to these people. Razel, why the F asterisk CK are they looking like puppies abandoned by their owners? Ha ha ha. Satoshi, the irony is, according to them, they won't move and wait for you to come back. Razel, ha ha ha. Satoshi, so, what would you do about this? Razel, oh you know well what I would do. Satoshi, I know. But that's not what I'm talking about. Razel, what then? Satoshi, I mean, you are literally being spawn camped right now. Isn't that the reason for you switching cities every time you log out back then? To avoid the very situation you are in right now? Don't tell me you are just not going to play for a month. Razel, for a couple of days yet, but a month? Are you insane? I'm too much of an addict to do that. Satoshi, I know. That's why I'm asking what you gonna do. Razel, meh they are hardly a problem. They're not gonna last there anyway. If you guys actually do what we agreed on that is. Satoshi, the removal of the god-defying totem? Yeah sure, I will make it happen personally. But you do know that we will only remove it from the market right? Players who bought a bulk of it would still have it even after that. And I doubt that their stocks of it will be gone in just a couple of days. If we do the math according to the graphs, a month is more realistic. Razel, yeah that's the thing, only stocks of it remained. Meaning, 
a weakness that can be exploited appeared. Satoshi, weakness? What are you talking about? Razel, hmm. I wonder what would happen if someone online said that he would buy some of those totems, for double the price, hmm? Satoshi, wait. You don't mean. Razel, they would immediately know that it is me for sure and immediately realize that it's nothing but bait, but like I said before my friend, money is money, only a crazy person would not want more of it. Satoshi, you despicable f asterisker. Razel, given how fast information travels within the wiki, I doubt they would last a couple of days there, let alone a month haha. Satoshi, Sai is a guy who fell for the same trick back then, why am I still surprised by your ways of dealing with things? Razel, the luckiest part of your life. Satoshi, Arg, I had enough of your haughtiness for the day. Since you probably sorted out all your problems already, my worries are useless. I'll just go and have my dinner now. Razel, I'm having mine right now. Satoshi, then focus on your meal first. I'll just give you the update later. Razel, sure. Satoshi, I hope you choke. Razel, tell that to your wife. Satoshi, F asterisk CKU. End of the call. Later that night. Underscore new post. Free. Yggdrasil. Posted by user Razel69, September 21st, 2132. At Kill Razel don't worry kids, dad will come back after buying some milk. Underscore. 8K 180.6K 223K. Chapter 65. Days have been skipped and years passed by so fast. Inside the game, Yggdrasil, many things happened to all the players that are playing within it throughout these years. Some enjoyed it, some didn't, and some are just, neutral about their opinions. Years after the Yggdrasil was released, many strong players, clans, and there are even famous parties have been known throughout the whole nine worlds. But nothing beats the prestige that strong guilds get. Many players have created or joined guilds. In Yggdrasil, being in a certain guild means a lot for a player. It serves as your identity, it describes how famous you are or your popularity. Especially if you are a member of the top ranking guilds. There are a lot of guilds inside Yggdrasil, but all of it has only one goal, and that's to reach the top 100 ranking in the list of the strongest guilds. In those years, the guild of Nzoulgaon has prospered a lot. They grew from their original 26 members when they started, to their current 46 members. Though that's a relatively small number of members compared to the other guilds, no guild will dare to engage in a war with them while holding the thought that they have a member advantage. The Nzoulgaon guild as a whole is said to have a strength enough to destroy a guild that has over 200 members within it. Their guild base is not even a part of this criteria yet. The same guild base that is said to be, the strongest and largest guild base throughout the entirety of Yggdrasil. At this point, unless it's a newbie, every player in Yggdrasil would surely know the guild of Nzoulgaon. Well, they are placed in the third rank amongst the thousands and thousands of guilds throughout the whole game so this fact isn't that surprising. But actually, that's not the only reason why this guild is so famous. In the year 2133, the exact date of Yggdrasil's seventh year anniversary, a certain event that would be known as the Great Racial Alliance Invasion happened. It is an event where the Great Tomb of Nazarick, the guild base of the Nzoulgaon Guild, got raided by a total of 2,678 players. Yes they were raided by that many players. 3,678 players have gathered and joined forces to try and bring down the Nzoulgaon guild. At that moment, everyone thought that all the odds were against them. That the Nzoulgaon is now doomed. The fact that there are seven world champions amongst the raider hyped this idea even more to the extent that this raid, has been watched by the whole community. It got streamed, it got clipped, it got recorded, IT got everything. The title? Six World Guardians vs. Two World Champions. It actually became a joke at some point that the title isn't even about the guild raid anymore. Anyway, guilds and clans are usually afraid to mess with AOG, even the two guilds that are ranked above them, wouldn't mess with them for no reason at all. But just the fact that these six players were included in the raid, was already enough to boost the ego of the other players, clans, and guilds to join in on the fun, thinking that, having these six cheat-like players within their team, AOG would not stand a chance. They didn't even care about the two core members of the AOG guild anymore. Razel and touch me. Well, it's quite understandable, cause, why would they? They have six, and the others have only two. Even if the other one of the two is Razel, what are two world champions in front of six world champions? 
not to mention the additional 3,000 plus players that are with those six. The answer is nothing. At least, that's what they believed in. Overall, that's pretty much one of the major reasons why the number of people who joined the raid is so great. They all think that their chances of success in this raid will be so high. Now for the other major reason, it's probably due to the fact that Razel, who is basically the most hated player in the entirety of Yggdrasil, joined in. After being the public enemy, Razel holed himself up in the world fortress called Nivelheim. This means, that organizing a hunt for him is impossibly hard cause just reaching the world alone is already, extremely difficult. Now given that fact and with the added conditions of many more annoying things, the quest for killing Razel became almost impossible even if the whole community teamed up again to hunt him down. Not with the god-defying totem gone, no. It's basically the only reason why the last massive hunt for Razel, became possible. That's why, with Razel participating in the AOG's great raid, all the participants thought that they could have another chance to kill him. Actually, it's not that much of a stretch to say that this raid, is practically organized just for Razel. Since no one can reach Razel, all who are pissed at him decided to go for the closest thing to him. Which is pretty successful since they managed to lure him out of his turf. Overall, to make the long story short, all the participants of this great raid are aiming for one thing. The ruination of AOG and its members. Razel included. But, given all these and that, lo and behold, as surprising as it is, the victim came out victorious in the end. The underdogs, the side that almost no one thought would win, won. And the funniest thing about this is that they didn't even come close to achieving their goal even with the combined effort of 3500 plus players. They all served as nothing but a laughingstock for the community and free advertisement for the AOG guild. An advertisement that shows how strong they truly are. But of course, UPS comes with its own downs. Even with their victory, the effect of the aftermath is still pretty great. Not only many things have been destroyed inside the Nazarick, and lots of major NPCs died, but a lot of their guild base information has been publicized too. Since the players that raided the Nazarick, managed to enter on different floors, pieces of information about the internal part of their base have been leaked out. Something that never happened once before. Thankfully, the leaked information is only about the first floor up to the sixth floor since all those raiders were able to reach that floor only before they were completely stopped. Well, they managed to reach the sixth floor's boss room at least. However, the information they have about the boss room on the sixth floor won't help them much, probably. Because originally, a chicken is not supposed to be there. Well, it's their fault anyway. If they had raided the tomb in a much faster way, they would have passed the sixth floor and probably, even reached the tenth floor at least. But due to their snail-like pace, a certain player got bored and decided to order a certain chicken to go down and finally play. But still, the information about Nazarick was still leaked out and that fact won't change. But yet, even with this information on hand, no foolish raid has been made against them ever since that embarrassing event. They were defeated by a group of 47 players even though their numbers were much greater than theirs. This became a meme actually since at first, they were so proud of themselves, that they even spammed the number Rip and Zoolgown throughout the community. But instead of destroying the guild, they helped them increase their popularity and reputation as the strongest guild in the whole of Yggdrasil. That fact is now cemented through and through. Now, as bad as it is for the raiders, it won't change the fact that it's one of the best happenings in the game. Truly one of the most memorable events throughout the years that Yggdrasil has run. There are many more memorable events, not just this. Those memorable events make the Yggdrasil as a whole. Those events are its foundation. However, no matter how strong the foundations are, over time cracks will appear and inevitably, make those very foundations collapse. Starting from the whole seventh year, the game Yggdrasil has started to fall down in its popularity charts. For some reason, the game has started to lose its popularity and many players have started to lose interest in the game. Many players have stopped playing already and some have even deleted their accounts. Many players are still playing but all of them are not playing as much as they used to anymore. As the years go on, the game loses its hype for the new players that it even comes to the point where the only one that is left playing the game, are those that are considered to be veterans. Meaning, the ones that have invested a lot in the game and cannot just leave. For those people, letting go is not an easy thing to do after all the work they've put on. However, the developers still tried their own best to revive the lost popularity of the game. They tried a lot of methods, they gave a lot of giveaways and free items for the players, and they even arranged some events that let the players gain a lot of things, but all of that sadly failed. 
it didn't meet the things that the developers were expecting to happen. Nothing has changed in the state of the game even after all that. So as days go by, many players are quitting the game, as in quitting the game permanently. But even if that's the case, they still ran the game. It continues on its tracks, even though the rating of the game is already at rock bottom. They continue, they try, they push. Gave it their best. Until they finally reached their limit. In the twelfth year. In the last month of the year 2138. The game's community by then has completely lost the vibrancy it once had. And as a result, the remaining players that are still playing Yggdrasil, have met their final day online. Chapter 66 In a certain bar somewhere in Tokyo, Yuki and his game developer friend, Satoshi, are currently sitting side by side while drinking some beer. Right now, Satoshi has an exhausted and crumpled expression while talking to Yuki. You just don't take a break do you? Well, anyone who has been in the same situation before would probably understand Satoshi's expression. Having a conversation with Yuki just feels like a job sometimes, it's tiring but you can't help but continue. At least, that's what everyone thought. Everyone that talked to Yuki with the same manner that is. Going back to the reason why Satoshi is this stressed. Just a moment ago, Yuki made a request to Satoshi to create custom items for him inside the Yggdrasil. Obviously, Satoshi immediately refused. Well, understandably so because first of all. They are not allowed to do that. It is highly specified within their rules. He knows that he made favors for Yuki throughout these past years he played, but nothing of that came close to his current request. Second. Doing that will be nothing but stressful. He's already pretty stressed now with his overall situation, more jobs to do is the last thing he would want. Last but definitely not least. In a couple of weeks, their game Yggdrasil is going to literally shut down already. So why the hell would he create an item for Yuki now? This is literally the worst idea ever. At least, that's what Satoshi thought to himself. Well, any person would probably accept this, thinking of it as nothing but a quick cash grab. Even he knows that Yuki himself probably wants him to have that kind of mentality as well but that's not the point. Yuki, as cringeworthy as it is, is his best friend. They've known each other for almost 12 years now. He might not admit it openly but he's quite worried about Yuki. Well, anyone would be so, especially when Yuki offered him an astonishing amount of money just to make him agree to his request. Dude. Are you hearing yourself right now? You are just wasting your money. Yggdrasil is already over why are you still doing this? Stop already man, there's no going back anymore. Satoshi said in a very strong tone as he pounded the table in front of him. He just can't help it. He's that worried for his friend. He's thinking that Yuki can't probably let go of the game. That he became too attached to it. He also can't help but feel somewhat responsible, given that he did a lot of favors for Yuki in the past, leading him to their current situation. Overall, he just can't help but be anxious about what will happen to Yuki once the game truly ends. A pure devastation. Well, no one can probably blame him for having that kind of thought since it's the most reasonable one, and anyone would probably think the same given Yuki's current actions. To make it all simple, what he wants is for Yuki to wake up and face reality. With the amount of money he possesses, instead of wasting it on a bunch of nonsense like this, he should just use it to make the most of his life. As sad of an idea as it is, no matter how much money Yuki pumps in the game, the same old Yggdrasil will just never come back. At this point, that kind of thing is near impossible already. All of that is Satoshi's perspective in this whole ordeal. However, no matter how noble his thoughts are, in the end, Yuki still manages to convince him nonetheless. Well. Yuki is a sly dog, and he is that for a reason. Because throughout their whole conversation, Yuki is pretty much aware of Satoshi's concern. He knows how worried he is for him and what kind of misunderstanding he is causing. So, instead of appreciating such concern and correcting the misunderstanding, he decided to take advantage of it instead and scheme his way through. Like what a good friend would do. And he decided to do all that step by step like a snake slowly wrapping his victim's neck. So, for the first step, in order to do everything as smoothly as possible, he first needs to set the mood in a pretty emotional one. Making it seem like he sympathizes with Satoshi. And as expected of a semi-professional scammer, he did it with no fail. So much so that there are even some moments when he looked like he was about to literally tear up. Even Yuki himself was surprised by how surreal his acting was. It looks so legit. 
Wasting no time though, Yuki immediately made a move for the next step. I know your concerns, but trust me, I'm completely aware of it. I know what I'm doing. Yuki said in a calm tone with a smile. He looks like he's so touched that his friend is so concerned about him. Now with this attack, Yuki dealt a pretty good blow, resulting to a small crack on Satoshi's first line of defense. Though at this moment, Satoshi is still a pretty stubborn man. That's why inside of those defenses, a bunch of guards immediately came out to stop Yuki's advances. That's good. But a no is a no. I'm still not doing it. Now, seeing the overwhelming guards that suddenly stood in his way, surprisingly enough, Yuki didn't falter at all. Not even a bit. Instead, a confident smile appeared on his face as he fearlessly rushed forward and started launching another attack. You see, at the end of this month, I'm going abroad. A and D. Yuki paused for a moment and looked outside, looking a bit emotional. Sigh. I might not come back. I don't know, I'm not quite sure. And this time, Yuki's attack is quite lethal as Satoshi's guards received devastating damage. Lessening the number of guards to a minuscule amount. And with no remorse for any of them, Yuki finishes the rest, as brutally as he can. So don't misunderstand. I'm not doing this because I can't get over on the game. It is purely because I want to enjoy my last moments with the game that I enjoyed playing throughout these years. The game where I met my best friends. I enjoyed playing Yggdrasil, but that joy never felt complete because I wanted to do something more. But the system just restricts me from doing that. So before the game ends, I want to achieve and do those things at least. That's why I'm making this request. My last request. Look, it isn't a waste of money, just like what you want me to do. I'm making myself happy. I'm truly trying to live the most of my life, it's just that, this is my way of doing that. Boom. 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 Blow after blow, each and every attack just keeps hitting Satoshi's defenses in the right spot. The defenses that Satoshi had, started crumbling down, unable to take Razel's lethal attacks. The guards who were stationed there to prevent Yuki's advances had been rendered useless as they all fell to the ground, not being able to withstand Yuki's hits. So, seeing the last wall in front of him, Yuki gathered up all his remaining energy to make the last and final attack. Making Satoshi's last defense, shivered in fear. Now, without feeling a single remorse in what he's about to do, Yuki, unleashed it. That way, I will have no regrets. Yuki paused again as he looked back at Satoshi's face with a gentle smile on his face. Before I leave everything completely. With that, boom. The last defense fell. It didn't even manage to withstand Yuki's final attack. And now, with the defenses gone, Satoshi became vulnerable to Yuki's corruption. It didn't take that long before Satoshi, finally stopped resisting, and ultimately agreed to Yuki's requests. Immediately after that, as if the scene that just happened didn't happen at all, the talk about the creation of the custom item, quickly began. Chapter 67 Here's the list of the items I want you to make. Yuki said as he handed Satoshi his phone that displayed a list. Satoshi said nothing as he then reviewed the list over and over again. This process took him almost half an hour before he finally looked back at Yuki. I have some concerns. Tell me. First, when do you need these? At this question, Yuki pondered for a moment first before answering back. Hmm, at least a week before the game shut down. Hearing what Yuki said, Satoshi nodded. All right but I'll be able to do only half of this list. Eh? Why? Well, this is too many. I mean, some of these are not even an item, but straight-out remodification requests. Within the given time, only half of this list is doable. Hmm. No bargain. Unless you want a scuff item. All right, whatever. It is what is I guess. Check your prioritized items then, Satoshi said as he handed back the phone to Yuki. Yuki then fiddled with the phone for a couple of minutes. He carefully selected the items that he wanted to be made and erased the ones that he, still wanted to be made as well but deemed less important than the other ones. After he was done, he gave it to Satoshi again for checking. Hmm. Once again, Satoshi reviewed the phone, checking the items that Yuki left on the list. Hmm. I have questions again. Go on. This, ring of the system maker, what is this exactly? Satoshi said with a bit of a confused face as he pointed out a certain item on the list. Oh, that? You know, a ring, that gives me a system. 
Yuki said casually. System? What kind? Like the one in game? Hey. Hearing Yuki's reply, Satoshi looked at him with an even more confused expression. Which is pretty understandable if one were to look at this from a game developer's perspective. We already have a system inside the game. Why would want another system for? Seeing Satoshi's ridiculous expression, Yuki sighed heavily. You would not understand even if I explained it anyway. This sarcastic remark from Yuki, made Satoshi roll his eyes. I had enough share of your craziness. I hardly get surprised by your actions at this point. After this, an intense glaring competition happened between the two as none of them wanted to give in it seemed. But looking at Satoshi's hardened expression, which is pretty uncomfortable to look at, it didn't take that long for Yuki to finally give in as he made one last sigh, all while wearing an expression that said you told me so. But before speaking, Yuki fixed his sitting posture first and then looked back at Satoshi with a matching serious expression. To put it in better words, their overall vibe right now is like how a father would act before he tells his children that he was adopted all along, or something like that. It's in that level of seriousness. You see my friend. Throughout the years I played Yggdrasil, I heavily relied on the system too much. Like how I fight, how I move, how I act, etc. All of it is heavily dependent on the existence of the system itself. Understandable, so. So, that's why I made this request to you specifically because you see, once I get reincarnated in the new world, that same system I relied on throughout these years, will be gone completely. It's like losing your most trusted partner. And you know I wouldn't like that, as much as I love new world. And new world? What? Like for sure, not all of it is gone, cause back in the anime, it seems that some of the system aspects are still there, especially when it comes to guild management. But for general things, it's not there anymore. At that point, I might as well treat it as gone completely, you know what I mean. Hey. I know, I know. It's a pretty privileged problem. But you know me, having a hard time is what I hate the most. Like when it comes to inventory management. I like to keep everything as neat as possible given how many items I got, but the way inventory works in New World seems pretty vague and random. Unlike with the system where it's all, convenient is the most appropriate word. And the reason why I want the system in an item form is because, it might disappear after the transmigration process if you install it in me directly. Better be cautious than sorry you know. Hold on, what the f asterisk ck are you talking about? It's an anime I watched before coming here. I'm role playing. Yuki said, naturally making lies as he breathed. What anime? And you still watch Ice Guy in this day and age? Well. It's like eating junk food. Can't help it. And you call me trash for liking slice of life? Jesus. Actually? Just as worse. Get a load of this guy. We both have worse taste in anime, let's just settle on that. TCH whatever. Going back to the main topic though. All I wanted to say is that, I just want a portable system. That's it. Yuki said as he broke off the tension in the air with a nonchalant expression, simultaneously gulping down his beer. This is a waste of time, Satoshi said with a huge sigh as he shook his head, completely giving up on trying to understand Yuki's logic on this one. Alright, describe how this system works. Just make a cliché one. You know, stats, panels, inventory, stuff like that. You get it, you're the expert on this subject. Alright, whatever. Anything else? Satoshi inquired as he started writing all the stuff that Yuki was saying. Oh. Can you put an AI in it too? AI? Yeah, it doesn't need to be a complex AI. Just a voice command will do. That's easy. Wait, what's the name of the AI? You'll regret it if you let me name this. Name Hui. Yuki pondered for a moment before a knowing smile appeared on his face. Alexa. Make it Alexa. Done. Next item. NPC World Item Wielder. What in the world is this? Satoshi said as he pointed to another item on the list with the same confused look. Oh, like, make an NPC that can use world items, PFT Yuki paused for a second as he saw Satoshi's face who gets increasingly confused the more he speaks. W what I mean by that is, give me an item that can make an NPC that can wield world items. My world items to be specific. For example, if I use that item on Longinus, an NPC will then be created that is pretty suited to use, the Longinus. Or something like that at least. 
Ah, I get it now. So I am guessing that this connects with the other item on this list. Erase the negative effects of each world items. Satoshi said while raising his eyebrows at Yuki. Is it doable? Yuki said with a cringing expression. Hearing Yuki's question, Satoshi pondered for a second before replying. I can, somehow make this work. I just need to tweak it so it can be a little acceptable. Hearing what Satoshi said, Yuki sighed in relief. Just don't be too harsh with the tweaking all right. Yeah yeah, I know. Now for the next one, what about this? The back-to-back -back questions continued after that. It lasted for a couple more hours before both parties finally seemed satisfied. Obviously, their conversation about the X items, yes that's how they planned to call it, didn't go as smoothly as Yuki expected it to be. It's quite understandable though since some of the X items listed are quite exaggerated, even he himself could agree. But he didn't expect that Satoshi would just flatly disagree on it without even room for negotiations. For example, the A compass that can lead me to the remaining world items and A pill that can remove my level cap or even the potion that can permanently double my stats. The likes of these kinds of X items were immediately shot down by Satoshi. When Yuki asked why, he simply said. Because no means no. Yuki even tried to bargain, like he tried to lessen the effectiveness of these particular X items, but when it comes to this kind of matter, Satoshi seems like an unmoving wall for some reason. At the very end, with a huge sigh, Yuki just gave up on the extreme OPness and just replaced those said requests with some of the items in the lists that he chose to give up earlier. All right, that's all for my questions. I'll just contact you once I'm done. Satoshi said as he stuffed his notes back in his bag and then raised his glass of beer. Cheers to that, Yuki said with a satisfied smile as he too raised his. Klong. After that, the two of them chatted for a little bit more. This goes on for another hour or so before they finally decide to leave, bid each other goodbyes, and then go on their separate ways. Chapter 68 Man, all the new ones right now suck a asterisk s, Yuki said as he looks at his phone with a deadpan expression. He's currently inside his bedroom, on his bed, lying down while searching for a good anime to watch. He's been scrolling on his phone, searching for a good amount of time now. But for some reason, all the anime he had seen up to the current moment, didn't appeal to him at all. Like, while looking at the cover, he didn't get that familiar tingle. Ah f asterisk ck this. So, thinking that he had no luck in finding a good anime today, he decided to close the site and hop onto another site. Wait. But when he was about to press the button to close the site, like a diamond amongst rocks, a certain anime caught his attention. Holy! Yuki's eyes sparkled as he saw that particular anime. For him, it somehow shouts nothing but perfection. From the art, the proportions, the animation, the description, and the fact that he hasn't seen it yet, everything is perfect indeed. Hehe, <laughs> finally! Yuki muttered with a mischievous smile on his face as he pressed the play button of the anime while simultaneously, reaching into a nearby cabinet, probably to take something out. To, 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 to do. But unfortunately, just before he could start what he was planning to do, his phone rang. Someone called him. Underscore. Yo. Right here. Yuki, upon entering a certain restaurant, a loud voice rang. A voice that upon hearing it, immediately catches his attention. Now it doesn't need some kind of genius to deduce that this voice belongs to someone he knows. That's why he didn't think much of it when he was prompted to come closer. As Yuki walked towards the source of the voice, the image of a man who seemed to be in his late twenties, wearing your typical salary man uniform, became more clearer. Jesus, you're still the same since I last saw you, Mishima, Yuki said in a teasing manner as he took the vacant seat in front of the man. It's like you didn't age at all. Come on now. You're making me blush. Haha. <laughs> now this uptight looking man in front of Yuki is known as Mishima or at least that's his real name that not many of his friends know about, it's due to the fact that he met most of his friends online, and other than his close ones, Yuki being one of them, he is only known by them as Blue Planet, his IGN. That's right, the same Blue Planet that Yuki used to play with back then in Yggdrasil. Well, as unfortunate as it is, Mishima already quit playing Yggdrasil a long time ago. He's one of the first batches of players to stop playing the game due to various reasons. But even though he stopped playing Yggdrasil, or probably just playing games in general, his connection with some of the friends he made there didn't stop. Every now and then, he would still talk to them, and catch up with some new happenings in each other's lives. 
Yes, he probably cannot meet most of them due to the difficulties of the situation, whatever it may be, but they all remain close up to this day. Even Yuki and him, due to the said difficulties, did not manage to hang out and catch up with each other personally for a very long time. But since today is a special day, even though there is still tons of unfinished work back in his office, both of them, or probably just Mishima, decided to take a break in the meantime and make this very meeting possible. No matter how short this meeting may be. Regarding the topic of how today is a special day for them. I guess it's really happening hey. Mishima said with a pretty solemn voice as he took a sip of the water he ordered before speaking again. Exactly seven hours from now, our beloved Yggdrasil will no longer exist hey. You don't say. Yuki replied with a huge sigh as he stared at the ceiling, looking a little bit down as well. After that, both of them paused for a second. That's right. The reason why today is a special day is because Yggdrasil servers, will officially shut down later this evening. It's a special day indeed, but unlike most days that are branded as special, this isn't a happy one, especially for avid players who hold on to the game until the very end. Well, many players were already aware of it even weeks before the announcement happened, but since there wasn't any official announcement at that point yet, many still hoped that it was nothing but fake news. Until earlier this morning that is, when Yggdrasil official released that news themselves. Well, obviously, even though the official announcement has yet to be released, Yuki already knows that this event will actually happen. How could he not? It's basically the moment he's most waiting for. Though as excited as he is, he can't help but still be sad about it. It's like getting what you want after kicking a lost innocent puppy, it's justified depending on the scenario, but it won't feel right nonetheless. So, to make up for it, Yuki, a couple of days ago, decided to call all his friends, asking for them to have a meet-up party during Yggdrasil's rumored last day. His reason? Well, nothing big really. He just wants to simply hang out and see everyone together again, for one last time at least. That's pretty much it. Unfortunately, even though everyone seems to like that idea, not all will be available for that day. Most of them seem to have an excuse and simply cannot go. Some said they could go but, that's the thing, everything is riddled with buts. So. Given these impossible and annoying situations, Yuki decided to cancel that idea and just go for the next best thing. Meeting everyone individually whenever they are actually free, whenever that is. And fortunately, to Yuki's surprise, this worked somehow. His friends would then give him their time of availability and based on that, he would organize a place and time for each of them. That's why during these past days, he's mostly doing nothing but going places, meeting and hanging out with all of his friends IRL, wherever they might be. And the meeting he's having right now with Mishima is one of those. Our boss is abusing us during these past weeks, making us go over time again and again without rest. Mishima said, frowning, as he chugged down his glass of beer in one go. Jeez. What an asshole. Yuki comforted his friend as he too chugged his own drink. That he is. That guy is the worst I tell you that. Mishima replied exaggeratedly, but mid-speech, he suddenly paused for a second and then sighed heavily before continuing to speak. That's also why I want to apologize to you. Hey. Yuki, after hearing Mishima apologize to him out of nowhere, was greatly confused. Look. I want to join you guys with that meetup, trust me I do, it's just that. I really don't have time. It's a lame excuse I know but. Mishima keeps on talking and talking after that. He keeps saying his excuses about how he was constantly getting pressured by his family, work, boss, colleagues, and many others. He keeps rambling on lots of stuff and as he goes on, his tone and voice keep getting more, intense. With that uptight face, no one probably expected him to speak in that manner. And yet he did. So, what Yuki did do as a response while this was happening? Well, nothing. He just listened. That's the least thing he could do in this situation really. People like this needed nothing more than an outlet to vent their frustration in life. You don't stop things like that, you let it flow instead. Yuki is very aware of that. How? It's because all his friends who he met these past days are also like this. Almost all of them vented out their frustrations about lots of things on him. After dealing with this scenario over and over again, somehow, Yuki became an expert already with this sort of stuff. Apart from that, this also made Yuki remember, how cruel this world really is. A fact that as shameful as it is, he has almost forgotten due to the luxurious life he had throughout all these past years. 
a luxury that was only given to him by nothing but pure chance. Can you believe that? He even said that. Like a great dam that keeps releasing, Mishima keeps going on and on for almost a minute without any sign of stopping. But surprisingly, as he reaches that certain point, he suddenly realizes what he's doing and quickly stops himself. S sorry. He then apologized to Yuki with an embarrassed tone. Covering his face cause he can't seem to believe what he had just done. Yuki on the other hand, gestured to him and said that it didn't bother him at all. But after seeing that it didn't console the now red-faced, due to extreme embarrassment, Mishima, Yuki sighed and quickly took an ice cube from his drink and in one swift motion, put it inside Mishima's clothes. K-Y-A-K. -K. Making him squeak and jump out of his seat in surprise. What the hell are you do after removing the ice cube inside his clothes? Mishima immediately gave Yuki a glare. He was about to lash out at him but his realization of why Yuki did what he did made him stop once again. Finally got you back on track hui. Yuki said with a smile as he gestured for Mishima to sit once again cause the people nearby were starting to give them the look already for being too noisy. Which Mishima did after apologizing to the other customers. Isn't it tiring? Mishima then threw a question to Yuki while sighing heavily. What do you mean? Yuki replied looking confused. Well, you've been doing nothing but meeting most of us these past days, and surely, things like this happened there as well. No, I am pretty sure it happened actually. Mishima said laughingly as he chugged down another glass of beer. Well, I won't deny that. But believe it or not, I really don't mind. Yuki, seeing both of their drinks were emptied already, paused for a second to order a new one before he continued what he was saying. I mean, it's probably the last thing I could do for you guys anyway. Right. Is it the thing about you going abroad? Well, yeah, yeah it is. Remind me where are you going again? To, somewhere really far. Too far you can't go back here anymore. It's a lot more complicated but yeah, something like that. I see. After that, the two of them paused. They don't know why but after that, both of them seem lost for words. But upon realizing the worsening mood, Yuki sighed loudly and then pat Mishima's back repeatedly. So that's why, just like what I said to the others, just take all of this as my parting gift. Think nothing more of it. Think nothing more. Hmm? Yet. Yeah. Mishima who understood what Yuki's trying to do, with a huge sigh, decided to not ruin the mood any further and just agreed to do what he said. Just think nothing more of it. Sigh alright I guess. But, are you sure? Mishima said with a challenging tone as a huge smile appeared on his face. You might regret saying that you know. Seeing that his friend started to finally let go of his restraints, a huge smile appeared on Yuki's face as well. H.O.H. go on then. Try me. Gladly. After that, as per Mishima's request, the two of them would continue ordering glasses of beer again and again and again. These would go on for another hour or two until one of them. Can't take any more beer and finally give up. To be continued. Chapter 69 Yuki is currently inside a bullet train, on his way back home after delivering his friend Mishima back to his apartment. Well, after their little drinking session, Mishima became so drunk at the end that Yuki thought that there was no way he'd get back on his own. That's why he decided that it was best to accompany him. Sigh. Didn't know that Mishima had that side of him when drunk. Yuki could only laugh and shake his head as he remembered Mishima's wife's expression after seeing her husband in such a chaotic state. Like Yuki, it seems that it was also her first time to see him like that. Arriving at Central Tokyo Station I repeat we are now arriving at Central Tokyo Station. As Yuki was busy giggling at such thoughts, he was suddenly interrupted by the announcer of the train. After hearing the announcement, he hurriedly took his bag from the compartment and then prepared to exit the train once it came to a full stop. Yuki lives conveniently close to the station, that's why after getting off the train, it won't take him that long to reach his own apartment. But as he was walking along the streets, he was suddenly reminded of the certain conversation he had with Mishima a while ago. Flashback. The state of our world right now is pretty sh asterisk tihoi. Razel said while looking outside the window which was filled with people walking along the streets with gas masks on their faces. Mishima on the other hand, after hearing what Yuki just said, sneered at him and replied with a pretty sarcastic tone. I don't want to hear that from a guy who lives inside a dome, unbothered by such a thing. Haha, <laughs> I guess you are right. Yuki paused for a second as he turned his head to Mishima first, before speaking again. Hypothetically, 
let's just say that you were given a chance to go to another world. A world that has clean air, trees everywhere, and a sky that resembles the sky you built in the amphitheater. Basically, the world you dreamt of. Would you go? Hmm. Mishima hearing Yuki's question didn't answer right away, unexpectedly so. He first thought to himself for a couple of seconds before gulping the glass of beer in his hands and only then, did he finally give Yuki a reply. What's the catch? Hat. You're so unnecessarily perceptive in these kinds of things hey. Razel chuckles as he too drinks his beer before speaking again. Nothing much. You'll just be a different being. Hmm. Like an animal. Not really. Think of it as, becoming your character from Yggdrasil. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Then I probably won't mind it. Really? Then you'll go. Would my family go as well? After hearing that, Yuki's face froze for a second. It was soon followed by a chuckle. A calm smile then appeared on his face after all that. UMM, no. No, I don't think so. Oh, then I probably cannot go. I cannot just go and have fun while leaving the rest of them here to suffer you know? It would leave such a bitter taste in my mouth. Besides, that dream of mine is not for me alone, but for my family as well. This world is what I want to leave behind, not them. I see. I respect it. Both of them drank their beers empty after that. End of flashback. To say that Yuki wasn't saddened by that conversation as he was remembering it now would be a lie. Obviously, he can understand the reason for it. He's not that immature. But that wasn't the only reason why he was saddened by it. No, normally this kind of thing would not be enough for it to get to Yuki. But the fact that everyone, literally every one of his friends that he had met this past few days, responded to him with the same line when asked the same question is really heartbreaking. Well, it's not all as noble as Mishima, cause not all of them decided that they could not leave because of family and stuff, some of them are also because of something. But basically, all of them cannot leave because of a particular reason that they cannot leave behind. Of course, Yuki can say to them that they can bring those that they cannot leave behind with them as well, to increase the chance of them agreeing to his idea, but why would he do such a horrible thing? That would basically turn him into a kidnapper. Yuki respects their decision and doesn't intend to force his own one on them. Sigh. As Yuki opened the door and entered his apartment, he headed straight to the kitchen to get some water. The sun just went down earlier and it's night already. Meaning, that the closing of Yggdrasil's servers is already pretty close. So, a couple of minutes after that, after finishing whatever he was doing, Yuki wasted no more time as he finally decided to go into his gaming room. But as he entered inside, before he closed the door, he looked back, glancing around his apartment for one last time. He even teared up a little while doing so. Well, this was the room that housed him for the entire twelve years. This apartment is where it all started. This is the place where he first ate, slept, game, sh asterisk t, master he basically did everything here. How can he not be emotional about such a sight when this is probably the last time he would see it? So as a thanks, while looking at his apartment, he bowed down. Thanks for everything. Before he finally closes the door. Thud. Yuki turns on his console and sits in his NNI. He had done this countless times already but for some reason, today, he was nervous for some reason. It's like he was doing this again for the first time. So Yuki took a deep breath as he grabbed his virtual helmet, ready to go online anytime now. But as he was about to do that. To 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 do. Hmm. Someone called him. Underscore. Satoshi, yo. Yuki, sup. Satoshi, how was woe, what's up with your voice? Did you just cry or something? Yuki, crying? I'm incapable of such a thing. Satoshi, thought so. You're too heartless for that. Yuki, this be asterisk tch. What do you take me for hey? Satoshi, I'm just kidding. Anyway, how were my babies? Yuki, hmm? Babies? Satoshi, my masterpiece? Yuki, you just made me more confused. Satoshi, are you always this dense? Are you trying to be a rom-com protog now? Yuki, I seriously don't know what you are talking about. After Nana-chan, I don't know any masterpieces you have made. Satoshi, this. You know what, you're right. You win this time. My daughter is probably my masterpiece indeed. Yuki, 
Not probably. If not for her, your wife would have left your sorry ass already so she's undoubtedly your blessing. Satoshi, get off my daughter will you? Go make your own one if you want. Oh, right. You can't cause your... Yuki, don't you f asterisking dare. Satoshi, whatever. What I'm trying to say is that I worked hard for those items you requested. That's what I am asking about, give me feedback. Yuki, the fact that I didn't say anything should have told you already that all of them worked well. And that I have no complaints. Otherwise, you would get that feedback from me until you're sick of it. Satoshi, yeah, I still need you to tell to me how amazing I am. Yuki, is that how you get off now these days? Satoshi, just do it. Let me hear it. Yuki, sci fine. Don't tell me I didn't warn you. Satoshi. Yuki, Satoshi san, you're amazing. You're so talented. You are a very good friend. Actually, without you, I don't think I would be able to. Satoshi, you. I don't want it anymore. Take it back. The hell. Yuki, see, I told ye. Satoshi, what the heck was that? It sounds disgusting. It's like my ears are getting. Yuki, okay you can stop now. Satoshi, anyways, you at the airport now? Yuki, airport? Satoshi, yeah airport. You said you're leaving Japan today right? Are you still not there? Don't tell me you forgot. Yuki, oh. Why yet, yet? I am. Course not. Satoshi, dumbass. So, when are you leaving? Yuki, just, in a while. Satoshi. That soon hi? Yuki, sigh. Yet. Satoshi, oh well. I heard that it's pretty chaotic in airports nowadays so, take care once you get there. Yuki, yeah, I will. Thanks. Satoshi, also, give Nana a call once in a while, will you? Gifts as well if you can. She's been sulking in her room ever since she found out that you are leaving today you know. Yuki, why yeah, yeah sure. Satoshi, wait, why do you sound like you're hesitating or something? Bro don't tell me. Yuki. And no of course not. Don't worry. I will. Satoshi, you better be. You didn't even allow us to see you off there at the airport so it's the last thing you can do as her uncle. Yuki, yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. I know. Satoshi, anyways, that's all I have to say. Have a safe trip alright? Contact me once you get there. Yuki, I will. Satoshi, alright, bye. Yuki, goodbye. End of the call. Chapter 70 A gigantic table carved of gleaming black stone sat in the center of the room, surrounded by 46 luxurious chairs. However, most of those seats were empty. Once, every single place had been filled, but now only two were occupied. One of the seated people was clothed in a magnificent black academic robe, edged in violet and gold. The collar seemed excessively gaudy, but somehow it fit the overall design. However, the exposed head was a bare skull. Points of dark red light glowed in its large eye sockets, and behind that skull glowed a halo of black radiance. The being in the other seat was not human either, merely a mass of a black, sticky substance. Its tar-like surface roiled and writhed continuously, never staying in the same shape for more than a second. The former was Momonga and the other one was Hirohiro. It's really been a while, Hirohiro-san. Although this is the last day of Yggdrasil, I didn't expect you to show up. Indeed it has, Momonga-san. The two of them spoke with the voices of grown men, but compared to the voice of the former, the latter's words lacked force, or perhaps it could be said that they lacked energy. You stopped coming online after you changed your job IRL, so how long has it been, about two years? Ah, seems about right wa, it's been so long, this is bad. I've been doing so much overtime recently that my sense of time is starting to go weird. That's really bad, right? Are you okay? My body? Well, it's a mess. I haven't had to see a doctor yet, but I'm almost there, it's really bad. Razel offered his help but sadly, it was still not enough. At the end of the day, I still need to go back to work like a whip slave I was. Oh wah. Momonga lowered his head in an I can't take it gesture. That's terrible. As though following up on Momonga's comment, Hirohiro delivered a grim monologue his words laced with an unimaginable reality. 
the two of them griped loudly about the foolishness they encountered in their working lives. Subordinates who did not know how to report, communicate and discuss things, spreadsheets that changed by the day, scoldings by their superiors for not meeting various KPIs, working late every day until they could not go home, gaining weight because of their irregular lifestyles, and the increasing amounts of medicine they had to take every day. Harahiro's grievances burst forth like a broken dam, and Momongal lent his ear to him. After about ten minutes, the torrent of words that flowed from Hirohiro dwindled to a trickle. I'm sorry for making you listen to my whining. I can't complain much IRL. The place corresponding to Harahiro's head seemed to sway, as though he were bowing in apology. Thus, Momonga replied. Don't worry about it, Harahiro-san. I made you come online despite you being busy, so listening to your complaints is only expected. I'll hear you out, no matter how many you have. Hirohiro seemed to have recovered some of his old energy, and with a somewhat more energetic laugh, he replied. Ah, I'm grateful for that, Momonga-san. I'm glad I could meet some of my friends after signing on. I'm very happy to hear you say that too. Wait, what do you mean by some freen? Although it's about time for me to log off. Harahiro's tentacle waggled in midair as he was operating the game menu. Oh. Why you're right, it is getting pretty late. I'm sorry about this, Momonga-san. Momonga sighed gently, as though he didn't want Hirohiro to sense the regret in his heart. Well, if it's like that, then it's a shame, time flies so fast when you're having fun. I really did want to stay with you guys to the end, but I'm about to fall asleep. Ah well, you do sound pretty tired. Then, you should log out soon and have a good rest. I'm really sorry. Momonga-san. Although, how long do you plan to stay, guild leader? I intended to stay on until I was automatically logged out once the servers shut down. Since it's still a ways off, maybe someone might come by in the meantime. Is that so? Hirohiro said then thought to himself. Now I'm not that guilty of leaving you alone here. Still, I really didn't expect this place to be so well preserved. At this moment, Momonga was grateful that he had no way to show his expression. If he did, Hirohiro would probably have seen his face twist up. Even then, his voice would betray how he truly felt, so Momonga kept quiet, in order to suppress the feelings surging up within him. He had worked hard to maintain the guild precisely because he had built it up along with everyone else, but hearing words like these from one of his guild members sparked a mix of complicated emotions in his heart. However, these feelings dispersed like mist as Hirohiro continued. Momonga-san, you must have kept the guild going as its leader so we could come back to it at any time. Thank you very much. It was a guild built by everyone, so it's my job as guild master to keep things going so that the members can come back at any time. Yes. We had fun with the game because you were our guild master, Momonga-san. I hope that when we meet again, it'll be in Yggdrasil too. I haven't heard anything about a second game, but as you said, I'd be glad if we could meet like that. I'll look forward to it. I'm having trouble staying awake. I think I'll log off first. I'm glad I could meet you in the end. Good night. Momonga wanted to say something, but he hesitated for a moment, and then he spoke. I was very happy to meet you too. Good night. A smiley appeared near Harahiro's head. Since characters in Yggdrasil could not express emotions through their facial expressions, they used emoticons instead. Momonga worked his control interface and produced a similar smiley. Harahiro's last words were, let's meet up again somewhere. And so, one of the remaining seven guild members that came online tonight, vanished. Silence descended once more it was as though nobody had ever been here in the first place. Nothing was left behind. Momonga looked at the place where Hirohiro had been sitting, and he muttered the words he wanted to say. Today's the last day of the game, I know you're tired, but we'll never have a chance like this again, why don't we stay together until the end? Of course. There was no response, because Hirohiro had already returned to reality. Ha <laughs> ha. Momonga's sigh came from the bottom of his heart. In the end, it was better that it had remained unsaid. During their brief exchange, he could already tell how tired Hirohiro was from the sound of his voice. Still, despite his fatigue, Hirohiro had still responded to the email he had sent and logged on for the last day of Yggdrasil before it closed down. He should have been grateful enough for that. Asking him to stay on would not just have been a matter of being thick-skinned, but actively causing him trouble. Momonga stared at the seat Hirohiro had occupied until just now and then turned to look at the other seats. 
those were the places where his old comrades had once sat. After going a circle around the table, Momongar returned his eyes to Harahiro's place. Let's meet up again somewhere, hey. Let's meet up again somewhere. See you again. He had heard these words several times before, but they had never come true. Nobody had ever returned to Yggdrasil. When and where will we meet again? Momonga's shoulders shook violently, and the words he could no longer hold back exploded forth. Are you kidding me? He pounded the table as he shouted. The Yggdrasil system registered this action as an attack and began the complex calculations of Momonga's barehanded attack strength against the table's defensive strength to determine the final total of damage inflicted. In the end, the area Momonga had struck emitted a simple minus zero. This is the great tomb of Nazarick that we built together. How could you abandon it just like that? After he shouted the words in his heart, the only thing left in there was emptiness. No, that's not right. They didn't abandon it lightly, they simply made the choice between reality and fantasy. It couldn't be helped. Nobody would betray the guild. Everyone who made that decision must have found it painful. Momonga muttered like he was trying to convince himself, and then he stood up. Why what are you? But when he turned around, he saw someone standing there, silently watching him for God knows how long already. Oh don't mind me, keep going. Chapter 71 Oh don't mind me, keep going. When Momonga turned around, he saw someone standing there silently. Ah Razel? S since when did you get here? Momonga asked in a panicked voice. Oh, I just got here, no worries. You just got here? Like exactly right now? Momonga asked suspiciously. Yet. Yeah. I only arrived when you started saying, you gotta be kidding me. Yuki paused for a second as a malicious emoji appeared above him. Basically from the very start. Hearing what Razel just said, Momonga's face suddenly became beet red. Thankfully, avatars don't convey the player's real-time expression. Because right now, Momonga is so embarrassed that he wants to just die or find a small hole where he could hide forever. He actually wanted to log out if not for the fact that this is the final day of Yggdrasil. Looking at his squirming friend, Razel shook his head as he walked closer to him. Oh come on, it's fine. I mean, I completely understand your frustrations and all, and if I were to be in your position, I would feel the same thing. Surely. Yuki said while patting Momonga on the back. Hearing Yuki's soothing voice, which sounds very sincere, Momonga started calming down. He thought that, finally, someone managed to understand his feelings and be on the same page as him. Turns out, he's not the only one. But the joy on Momonga's face suddenly froze when he saw a playback screen right in front of his face the moment he removed the hand that was covering his vision. Recording, you gotta be kidding me? This is the great tomb of Nazarick that we built together. How could you abandon it just like that? No. That's not right. They didn't abandon it lightly, they simply made the choice between reality and fantasy. It couldn't be helped. Nobody would betray the guild. Everyone who made that decision must have found it painful. Damn bro, I'm surprised you can say such an embarrassing thing so easily ha ha ha. I, I don't care anymore. Momonga thought out loud as he immediately opened up his system and started navigating the logout button. He did not even care about his plans for the day anymore. He's just too embarrassed right now that his main priority is to just disappear in this world as fast as possible and then hole himself up in his room. Oops, don't even think about it. But before he could even press the logout button, his hands were stopped by Yuki. Ah Razel san please, I'm all ready. Momonga tried to plead, but his resistance completely shattered when Yuki spoke again. If you press that logout button now, I will send this video to every single one of them. Not a single soul will be spared, I promise you. Said by Yuki in a pretty threatening voice. And when Momonga heard this, his heart suddenly sank, and his eyes grew larger. No no no, please don't show them that. I won't be able to Momonga started begging Yuki on the floor. Yuki seeing him in such a state is already embarrassing, but if it's just that then Momonga can still endure it, but if it's all his friends that saw it, then it's a different topic. He would literally commit suicide if such a thing happened. Ha 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 ha, chill man, I'm just f asterisking with you. I'll delete this, look. Yuki said as he operated his system and deleted the recording in front of Momonga. Ha thank goodness. I might really hang myself if one of them sees that. Said Momonga with a huge sigh as he stood up from the floor. Oh come on now, you know me, 
How could I do that to a friend, Yuki said suspiciously. Yeah right. Well, anyways, I'm glad that you also came, it's a shame that you didn't arrive a couple of minutes earlier, Harahiro-san just logged out. When Razel heard this, he giggled lightly. Actually I already arrived here an hour ago. I already met Hirohiro and said my hello and farewells to him. Really? Then why didn't he tell? Oh, so that's what he means by that. Skull. Yup. Pretty much. Sigh anyway, what did you do here before we arrived? You logged in too early. Momonga asked in a confused manner as he saw from the logs when Razel logged in. Well, you know, just fidgeting some things here and there. Nothing much. Yuki said nonchalantly as he took a seat in some vacant chair nearby. When Momonga heard this, he became more confused. And very suspicious. Like, he saw from the logs that Razel has been on different floors. What fidgeting? Momonga asked. Seeing Momonga's interest in the current matter, Yuki laughed slightly, thinking that Momonga seemed to be forgetting about the fact that their schedule was tight and they didn't have the luxury of time to just sit here and have a long conversation. So with that thought in mind, Yuki decided to cut the conversation off, conveniently, as much as he wanted it to go on. It's not important trust me. What's more important is that we should move now. Razel said in a lazy tone as he stood up slowly. When Momonga heard Yuki's remarks, he suddenly remembered that there were only a couple of minutes left before the server shutdown happened. All right. I almost forgot. Chop chop, grab the wand. Time's ticking. Yuki said as he walked towards the exit. W wait. Momonga shouted as he hurriedly took the staff of Inzo old gown. Wooong. The staff made a wooing sound as Momonga took it from its compartment. After that, he immediately followed Yuki outside. Tap. 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 While they were both walking along the corridors of the 11th floor, they talked about a lot of things on their way. Well, Momonga commonly known as Satoru in real life, didn't manage to participate in Yuki's meetups these past few days cause his schedule simply wouldn't allow him to. He managed to make it up though by going online today, to which, Yuki is already aware. So basically, it's been a while since they last talked personally, and that's why they took this chance to catch up with one another. Other than Harahiro-san, is there any? No. Only you and Hirohiro. Yuki said in a passive tone. I I see. Momonga muttered to himself. Clearly sad about the thing he just heard. I talked to all of them though, met them all personally, I even tried to make them go online tonight but, you can see how that went already. Said Yuki as he sighed gently. What he said just now, is a lie, obviously. Well, it's true that he talked to all of his friends through Meet UPS, but he did not convince them to go online tonight. He kinda had a roundabout way of asking for something like that, but it's not as straightforward as telling them to go online tonight. Regardless, all of them said no anyway so in the end, it doesn't really matter. He just said such a thing so he could make himself look like a very compassionate friend. They must be busy with work. Momonga, though very disappointed, still tried to understand and vouch for his friends. However, when Yuki heard that, he immediately scoffed. Or with something else, Yuki said in a pretty mysterious tone. Or that's what Yuki tried to be since Momonga immediately caught up on his subtle sarcastic attitude. Hmm. You said that you met them all right? Then, does that mean, you also met? Chagamasan. When Momonga mentioned her name, for some reason, Yuki's attitude seemed to have soured. But he still gave him an answer nonetheless. I did. Hat. Momonga made an understanding smile when heard this. How did it go though? I heard you guys have been in an odd situation ever since, you two broke up. Hmm. I don't know. Fine. I honestly don't you know what, let's stop this topic already okay? I I don't want to talk about it. Everything that happened is for the best of both sides. She already moved on, she looks happy in her life now, and that's what matters. Period. End of the discussion. Yuki said sternly, leaving no room for the current topic. Momonga on the other hand, wanted to tease his friend a little more since he had never seen him this salty before. Something definitely happened haha. But of course, he knows that when Yuki says no, that's it. No more of that topic, unless he wants to be bullied again. Bok. Bok. Bok bok. But as they're going down towards the 10th floor, 
both of them have suddenly noticed a clucking sound from a far distance. Wait, is that? When they looked in the direction where the clucking was coming from, they noticed a small white creature, approaching them at full speed. To be continued. Chapter 72 Frank Henstein Momonga said out loud as he noticed a chicken running in their direction. The chicken then jumped and performed a flip midair, landing on Yuki's head perfectly. Look at this cock. Yuki said laughingly as he looked at the chicken that already made itself comfortable at the top of his head. Momonga on the other hand, found this scene funny. Maybe it wants to spend its last moment with its creator, Momonga said. Hmm, probably. Yuki nodded as he too found this moment cute. But as much as he wanted to spend some more time here and cuddle his chicken, both of them hurriedly resumed their walk, cause the server shutdown was already pretty close. They cannot waste any more time. They would have more for sh asterisk t and giggles later, but for now, they need to get to the throne room as fast as possible. Now as they finally reached the 10th floor, they were greeted by a bunch of NPCs dressed in maid uniforms. Well, except for the male one since he was in a butler outfit. Sabas and the Pleiades. Yuki thought out loud. Whoa. I'm surprised that you still remember their names clearly. Cause even though I used to log in frequently, I still kind of forget their names. I'm just built differently. Anyway, have them tag along. Let's rally them up for the very last time. Yuki said with a hurried tone, clearly showing his eagerness to speed up this scene, as nostalgic as it is. Well, the tiredness from being up since this morning up until now is already creeping up to him so no one can probably blame him. Normally, he would have logged out already to rest at times like this, but for obvious reasons, he couldn't and was forced to endure it until his goal was complete. Yeah, that's a good idea. Momonga agreed to Yuki's idea as he ordered the NPCs to follow them as both of them resumed their walk. Tap. 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 Not long after that, they finally arrived in front of the throne room. Eeing. The doors in front of them creaked as they slowly opened and revealed the throne room itself. They proceeded to walk in after that. Then, while they were approaching the throne, they noticed the NPC that was standing beside the throne. But they didn't say anything about it. Yuh when they reached the throne, Momonga looked back towards the NPCs that was following behind them, intending to make them stop. All right, stand by Momonga said as he commanded the NPCs and proceeded to sit down on the throne after that. Yuki on the other hand, brings out his own chair and sits beside him. Oh wah, what a sight. If only I can have this in real life. Yuki said with a bit of a mysterious tone in his voice. Yeah, if it is you, that's probably possible. Said Momonga while laughing as he remembered how rich Yuki was in real life, clearly misunderstanding what he truly meant by that. Hmm. But after saying that, Momonga's attention was suddenly caught by the NPC that was standing beside him. He then pondered for a moment. Albedo hey. Momonga muttered as he started operating his panel, wanting to look at her description for some reason. It's like, he felt a sudden urge to check her description somehow. Though he's not the only one who felt that tingle. The guy on the other chair, Yuki, started sweating balls when he realized what he was trying to do. A a few minutes more and it's all over now hey. Yuki said with a sad tone. Completely masking the panicked expression on his face. Hey? Ah. Oh yeah, didn't notice that it's already that close. Momonga said as he looked at the rising timer on the corner of his screen, a sight that made him a little bit sad. It's also a sight that managed to distract him from what he was planning to do just now. Looking at this, both of them sighed. Momonga sighed because Yggdrasil, the game he played for a couple of years would now be gone in just a minute, and then there was Yuki who's just glad that he stopped Momonga in his tracks. The reason why he's so glad about that is, unknown. After that, a short silence covered the two. It's been fun playing with y'all Razel san If I hadn't met you back then, I wouldn't have enjoyed the game and probably just quit instead. Momonga said in a low tone while feeling a bit emotional. He don't mention it. You are pretty much welcome. As they all saw that there were only seconds left before the server shut down, Momonga closed his eyes as everything seemed to slow down for him. He started remembering everything and every moment he had with his friends while playing the game for nine years. Thanks for everything, it was fun. It was really fun. Momonga said slowly. Yuki on the other hand didn't say anything but just sat there. Watching the ever-rising timer. 23 hours 59 minutes and 37 seconds. 
23 hours 59 minutes and 38 seconds. 23 hours 59 minutes and 39 seconds. At this moment, Yuki smiled gently. After waiting for 13 years, it's finally starting. As much as he likes to cringe at the thought of it, he can't help but feel a little bit emotional. He spent the 13 years of his life just preparing for this exact moment. In those 13 years, honestly, he could have done so much more. There are even some times when he just thought of stopping completely, but that very thought is the reason why he's still going. Because he hates that this kind of thought, lingers around his mind. He can't believe that after all the privileges he's having, he still dares to think of such things. But alas, he finally arrived on the most awaited day of his life. None of his past problems matters anymore, cause the suffering is now over. He doesn't need to worry about it any longer. Starting from now on, he will do nothing but enjoy his life. He will enjoy it until he doesn't want to anymore. 23 hours 59 minutes and 57 seconds. 23 hours 59 minutes and 58 seconds. 23 hours 59 minutes and 59 seconds. At this moment, Yggdrasil finally ended. Expecting the upcoming new world, and knew him, Yuki readies himself for any unexpected happenings that the transmigration process might cause. But even though that was the case. Midnight. One second. He still yelped in surprise when all of a sudden, his vision darkened and a jolt of electricity ran through his entire body. The electricity didn't hurt him that much but as this happened, anxiousness immediately surfaced in Razel's mind. Thinking that something must have gone wrong. Fortunately, this happening didn't last that long cause, just a second later, everything came back to normal again. Making Razel sigh in relief. Hey. A sigh of relief that, was cut short because the moment his vision came back, he immediately realized that. What? He wasn't in the throne room anymore. Whoosh. But in a completely different place. Reference photo for the scene. Chapter 73. Who? Where the F asterisk CK? Razel paused momentarily as he started looking around at his surroundings. Am I? Judging from his confused expression, it's pretty obvious that what is happening right now is not what he planned. Well, he has every reason to wear that kind of expression cause just a few moments ago, he was sitting in the throne room of Nazarick, and out of nowhere, he suddenly found himself standing in the middle of a snow field. Of course, he's aware of the transmigration phenomenon that will happen after the server shutdown. What he's confused about is the fact that he was transported to a place he doesn't recognize. He did not expect this to happen at all. Just like how it happened in the anime, it's pretty reasonable to think that he will be transported to the New World together with Momonga, meanwhile, still being inside the Great Tomb of Nazarick. But not only that did not happen, but he's also now in the middle of God knows where. Normally, he would be able to recognize a place based on the overall ambience of that said place, but sadly, that's just not the case here. Razel ruffled his hair in annoyance as he looked around his surroundings once more, checking if he missed something. Hmm. Fortunately enough, this time around he actually managed to notice something. I, don't think I'm in the right place. He is not sure if the New World has a snowy area or something like that but, as odd as it might sound, for some reason, Razel is starting to think that he's probably not in the New World. His reasons? Well, it's all thanks to this weird sensation he's feeling, which is a feeling that has some sort of connection somewhere. He didn't know where that somewhere was exactly, but he knew that it was somewhere in this world. Not only that but he could also tell that he holds some sense of odd familiarity with it. And yes, through that very connection, he can weirdly sense that this world is nowhere close to the image he has of the new world. He has a vague guess of what is happening right now or even the world he's currently in but he still has a lot of questions that need answers so he can be 100% sure of it. And thankfully, he knows where to get it, if things go according to the plan that is and no more surprising f asterisk ck ups will happen anytime soon. But first, he needs something. A certain ring of his. Sounds easy right? He just needs to take it out, but the thing is, this very ring in question, is stored in his inventory. And he doesn't know how to open his inventory. He doesn't know what to do. Unlike in the game where all he needs to do to access his inventory is to just reach out on the menu, here, things don't work like that. So, while praying intensively that whatever he was about to do, would hopefully work. Razel started looking down at his hand and started visualizing the ring he wanted. Thankfully, something happened. Cause as he did that, in front of him, a black hole popped out. 
it's not exactly what Razel expects to happen but, hey, if it works it works. After that, Razel then reached out inside the black hole, and inside it, he felt something. Just from the sensation of it, it seems to be a ring. It just so happens that a ring is what Razel wants. So with a hopeful expression on his face, he grabbed that ring and pulled it out of the black hole. Yes. And judging from his reaction just now, he seemed to have gotten the right item. He wasted no more time after that as he immediately took the ring from his palm, opened his mouth, and then, proceeded to swallow it. Well, indeed, it is a ring, and it will give its user buffs for wearing it like how anyone would usually wear rings. But unbeknownst to many, it has a hidden function, and that hidden function can only be obtained by swallowing the ring. Hence Razel did what he just did. Now, to confirm if he actually got the hidden function of the ring. Alexa. Razel while looking around, suddenly called out to someone. Honestly, Razel expected an immediate response after that but unlike what he expected, no one answered his call. He decided to call out again a couple of times after that but, unfortunately, he got no response still. UMM, there's probably some sort of delay. Inhaling some dose of pure copium, Razel reasoned to himself and decided to wait for more. But, another minute had passed and he still got no response. Feeling the ever-rising nervousness inside him, Razel was about to call out again. But, fortunately, before he could do that. Yes? How may I help you? A feminine voice suddenly rang inside his head. Thank God. I was about to sh asterisk t bricks. He finally got a response and that made Razel sigh in relief. What got you so long? Razel then asked the voice with a little bit of a frown on his face. Clearly annoyed that it took him that long before getting a simple response. I apologize. During the recalibration of the system, I cannot take any actions yet. Hence I did not manage to give you an immediate reply. Oh. I see. Hearing the reason for the delayed response, Razel nodded his head and gave forgiveness. Now he knows that this AI is not just trolling him and there's actually a reason for it. Now, on the other hand, if someone were to see Razel right now, they would probably think that he is already going insane, cause he started talking to himself all of a sudden. But everything can be explained by the fact that the ring he ate just a while ago is a ring that can give him a system. And in that custom-built system, there exists an AI program to manage everything. And that AI is called, Alexa. The one that Razel's talking to through all this time. Obviously, Razel knows of her existence already, though he still can't help but panic when he receives no response from her for a couple of minutes. Well, in the first place, Razel didn't manage to actually test Alexa back then in Yggdrasil cause consuming the ring to unlock the system is only a one-time thing. Once he does it, the process can't be reversed anymore. Meaning to say, this is his first time seeing the ring of the system maker in action and hearing Alexa as well. In any case, as much as he wants to find out what cool things can his new system do, he has priorities this time. That's why he decided to do that later on and go first on a much more important topic. All right, it's time to see how much of a masterpiece this system is. Razel muttered with a sarcastic tone as he remembered his friend Satoshi, rubbed on his face the fact that this system was one of his masterpieces back then. So, expecting something great out of it, Razel finally started working the system. So Alexa, can you tell me where is this place? But unexpectedly, Alexa did not reply to him immediately. Just like before, it was delayed cause it took him a few seconds before he finally received a reply from her. According to my database, the current location that we are in now is to be continued. Chapter 74 Unknown Yes. The description of this place does not exist within my database so I am sorry, I cannot give you any answer. Hearing what Alexa told him, Razel's hope which was ignited momentarily, died immediately. Well, he kinda expected this kind of answer already, but he was quite hopeful that he would be given any hint at the very least by this masterpiece of a system. Not just a simple no for an answer. I compared the surroundings to the places that are saved in my database but none of them have matched. Yeah yeah, I get it. I appreciate your help. But I could start a mapping sequence if you would like. It seems to me that this unknown land would be a great addition to my information database. Wait. Mapping sequence? Can you explain to me how that works? Razel asked, though he has a vague idea of what this does, he still wants the exact details about it. 
The mapping sequence is a protocol that allows the system to gather information about the surrounding lands without the need to be present in the said lands. Using this, we can quickly gather information about the lands around us. Who, that's amazing. I didn't know that you could do that. Well, you didn't ask. Should I start the mapping sequence? You take after your creator. Thank you. That wasn't a compliment. Should I start the mapping sequence now? Ha. Huh. Yeah, whatever, go ahead. Mapping sequence has been initiated. How far should I go? Doesn't matter. Go all the way. Map as much as you can. Understood. After that, Razel then sighed. He then laughed a little bit while thinking of the fact that Alexa had some pretty annoying traits in her, which heavily resembled his friend. Well, surprisingly, even though annoyed by it, he doesn't seem to mind it. Well, at the very least, he would probably prefer this compared to a bland AI. All right, let me see the map. Can you bring it up for me? Razel said and immediately after this, a system window appeared in the corner of his vision. In that window, a map-like feature is displayed. However, in that said map, he can see nothing but darkness. Wow, right now, this map is so useless. Since Alexa has no data about the place he's in, his map is obviously blank. Other than the spot where he's standing, it displays nothing. But Razel knows that the current pitiful state of his map wouldn't stay that long since, a minute later, the vision that his map covers, started growing at a massive rate. Suddenly, his map started to brighten as new places started appearing out of nowhere. Seems the map sequencing is working all right, Razel commented as he closed the map. The area that his map covers is starting to get bigger, but there's no reason for him to look at it, especially at the current moment. Besides, if Alexa detected something, since the map sequencing profiles anything it passes through as well, from living beings to structures, he would surely be notified. Alexa, I know this question is nuts given that you just started a few minutes ago, but is there a way that you can give me an estimated time of when will this mapping end? Well, I can. Damn really. Yes. In what format would like me to detail it? Yo, ours will do. Understood. Then, my estimated time of completion is around, 13,149 hours. I strongly recommend that you shouldn't wait for the completion before making a move. According to my calculations, it's a bad idea. After hearing Alexa's sarcastic remarks, Razel snorted. Yeah you think? Why is IT that long? T that's like. Razel then started computing, converting the hours that Alexa gave him into a year format. But before he could even do that, Alexa butted in. Exactly one and a half years. Why yeah, that? Why does it take that long? Razel said in a demanding manner. Well, based on the information data I have been receiving so far, this is the time that I came up with. Given the speed of the mapping, and how the current world we are in is structured. Still, isn't that too? Razel was about to complain but he immediately realized that doing that would change nothing. All right, whatever. Just give me the information you have gathered so far about this world, cause it seems that you already have it. Understood. According to my analysis so far, this world seems to be a round planet, because as we scan and cover further lands, there seems to be a very slight curve in the overall structure of the lands, and by going deeper inside the planet, according to the very very slight increase in temperature, a core must be existing in the very center. Hinting that this planet is structured just like Earth. As Alexa stated this, Razel immediately fell into his own thoughts while listening to her. How did she know that? There's no way Satoshi would add a piece of information that's so useless as that. Wait, can she read the contents inside my mind? Is that, the database she's talking about? May I add that this world in comparison to Earth, is larger by at least 30 times. That's because the land we have scanned so far is already as big as a continent by Earth standards, yet we can't picture at least one-fourth of the planet yet. Yep, she can definitely read my mind. When it comes to the weather, on the other hand, this world seems to be in a state of eternal winter. I can't make any assumptions as to why it is like that, because an unknown force seems to be involved in that matter. I see. It's fine, never mind that. Instead, tell me about the living creatures you have scanned so far. Razel said in a plain tone. Though he might seem too relaxed outside, inside his mind, he's quite serious as he's starting to piece together all the information he's getting from Alexa. 
I just need to confirm one more thing to finalize my information about this world. If it's the living creatures. I managed to profile everything I had scanned so far and put it in the Bios Diary. Really? All right, bring it up. After this, a holographic screen appeared in front of Razel. Inside that screen, appeared a list of different kinds of creatures, ranging from animals, plants, insects, etc. Razel didn't speak for a whole minute or two as he continued doing nothing but scrolling and looking at the list that Alexa gave him. Though at first glance, everything seems random, in Razel's eyes, they're not. Actually, while looking at the list, a knowing smile appeared on his face. I knew it, Razel muttered while still looking at the list. I'm in Nivelheim. Every bit of information he had gathered so far solely dated that fact for him. At first, he's not quite sure of it. Well, the moment he arrived here, everywhere he looked screamed of nothing but Nivelheim. He knew it, of course, it was quite obvious, but he wanted to make sure of it first. He doesn't want to just jump to a conclusion right off the bat. But now, after seeing the familiar structures of this world, the things that live here that can only be seen on the Nivelheim he knows, and the eternal winter and the force that's keeping it, especially the connection he's been feeling since earlier, he's sure of it now. 100%. He's in his home. Still, I don't understand why I'm here. This is the confusing part. Why here and not in the new world? Razel asked himself as he started pondering hard. And the big question is, where's new world? This is the big question that Razel has no answer to at the moment. He's afraid that even Alexa might not be able to help him in this matter as well. Now he's frustrated again. He was happy a while ago since he confirmed that his guess is correct that he's in Nivelheim, but he immediately realized that other than that, he got nothing yet. It's like putting the very first piece of the puzzle in its right place, now only a thousand more are left. Damn my life! Although Razel was not feeling tired physically, he sat down on the icy and snowy ground with a worn-out expression. I wonder, when will I get my well-deserved rest? Razel said in a low voice. I thought that the new world would give me that. Now, while looking at the setting giant sun from afar, he started laughing weakly at the thoughts lingering in his head. He then continued laughing for a couple more seconds, and after all that, Razel abruptly stopped. He then looked down at the ground and then sighed heavily. Truly, how naive. Underscore 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 un. If you want to read ahead, join my Patreon to read the advanced chapters and support the story in the process. It will be a great help to me and can make this story go even further. www.pat-reon.com slash evravenzz Chapter 75 And, to those that are curious about whether MC already changed his face or not, or if he did, what he looks like, it's all stated in the auxiliary. Somewhere in Nivelheim, in a place where a raging storm is taking place, a small cabin can be seen. Although the storm that is happening around that particular cabin is strong enough to rip some living beings into pieces, for some reason, that wooden weak-looking cabin remains unmovable. It's as if, the storm around it is being treated as nothing but a gust of wind. Well, this should be no surprise because almost everything that comes out of Razel's inventory is not normal. That's right. This particular cabin is one of Razel's artifacts. And the fact that it's standing here outside means only one thing. Razel's inside. Nivelheim is really harsh, hey? If it was Momonga who ended up in this world, even I wouldn't know what to expect. Razel muttered with an unmoving expression as he looked outside the window, all while standing in the middle of broken wooden-looking mannequins. This cabin was brought out by Razel earlier from his inventory in order to take shelter from the storm. But, in reality, given his immunities, he actually doesn't need to hide. Well, the storm isn't really the main reason for this action of his anyway. There's another reason for the appearance of this cabin, and actually, it just so happens that a storm suddenly appeared and he needed shelter. Now for the main reason, it's actually to, familiarize himself with Mana and to stretch his ever-quaking body. To explain the reason properly, upon moving for the first time, Razel found out that his body, for some reason, was so hard to control. He can still move of course but to do it, he needed to put a huge amount of focus and effort just to make the movement as smooth as possible. If not, then he's like a two-year-old trying to achieve his first steps. Well, right now it isn't as bad as that, at least not anymore, 
now that he managed to familiarize himself with his body. But that doesn't change the fact that it's an annoying problem to deal with. To be fair, no one probably likes to focus very hard simply because they want to scratch their itchy head, do they? Now going to the reason why this problem exists in the first place, as Alexa explained, turns out, it's all because of his rampaging mana. Which, kinda makes sense actually if one were to think about it deeply. First of all, Razel possesses an insane amount of mana. Too insane for his own good. Not only that but he also has the origin class, which in simpler terms, makes him a being that heavily relies on mana. And since mana is basically his partner, and he did not even notice its existence until Alexa told him so, it's natural for it to go on a rampage. A Yandaram mana as Razel described it. Now, Razel's body is heavily burdened due to that very problem. But unfortunately, the problems don't end there. Because of that same problem, Razel cannot access some of his spells and skills as well. All for the reason that his control and understanding of his mana are still pretty low. Sure, he can still use some of it, but the majority of it is locked away, for his own good that is. So to make the long story short, sadly, until he fixes this problem, Razel will be nerfed. Now, as to how Razel could fix this very problem, well, fortunately, all he needed to do was just to master his own mana, that's all. Once he does that, according to Alexa, everything will turn to normal again. There are lots of ways of doing that but the most effective seems to be the thing that he's doing right now, training. Cause as he was doing that, he gets to stimulate his mana, making his proficiency over it, rise. As of now, according to the panel that Alexa gave him, which tracks his progress with his mana mastery, he is now on a hooping 4% over 100. Well, it's not much indeed but as they said, beggars can't be choosers. So, yes, the reason why there's a bunch of broken mannequins lying on the floor right now is because of Razel's training. These mannequins are target slash practice dummies. Actually, a few moments ago, these mannequins were pretty lively as they kept moving from one space to another, but now that they're broken, they are obviously, not moving anymore. Though when it is all worded like that, one might think that all Razel did throughout this whole time was just obliterate these poor mannequins using his spells. Which isn't the case at all. Cause for Razel, other than his mana problem, knowing what his system slash Alexa can do is just as important as that. Regarding that subject though, fortunately enough, he found something. He found how useful Alexa can be. Well, he already knows that she is useful or can be very useful, but what he found out today is not within his expectations. To name a few other than the help Razel received regarding his issue with his mana, first is the game overlay. What this does is basically, take Razel back in Yggdrasil. Not literally obviously. That's pretty impossible at this point. It's just that, this function makes Razel see everything the same way when he was still in Yggdrasil. He can access maps, inventory, skill slash spell lists, descriptions, and many more like he was still inside a game. All Yggdrasil's UIs in short. Yes, the way they function is different cause, for example, the inventory. Unlike in-game, Razel just needed to tell Alexa what he needed out and be done with it. He doesn't need to browse some panels anymore and do all that complicated stuff. This is also the same for the others. Everything looks the same, but their functions became voice commands or at least something like that. Well, Razel can still interact with the same old panels if he wants but, the use of that is very situational. Actually, the voice command, or basically, Alexa, is the other usefulness that Razel found out. Well, according to Razel's words, is basically like having a Google in this situation. Add to that was the fact that he can also have a very precise conversation with her is such a mind-blowing thing. Razel did not appreciate it at first, or at least, not as much as he is now. But it kinda grew into him as time passed by. There's one more notable thing. Razel has a very good memory, but due to Alexa's presence, every moment in his current life is basically unforgettable now. If he wants to remember something, she can just show him directly what happened that certain day, on screen. Overall, that's basically the bare bones of what Alexa can do, there's so much more, and unfortunately, Razel doesn't have that much time to indulge himself in it. There's so much he needed to do and things such as this will have time for the future. For now, all he needed to know and have is already there, and that's what's important, the rest can just wait for the meantime. Time is too little. Too little in fact that even though Razel already minimized his schedule as much as possible, he still got cooped at the very end. Cause while he's in the middle of his training or practice, 
Alexa suddenly interrupts him. Hello, as per your instructions, I was to notify you immediately if I found something that was worth mentioning. Razel, who was in the middle of massacring the poor mannequins, stopped as he looked at Alexa. Or at least, the floating window that is supposed to represent her. What is it this time? After Razel said that, he immediately went back to massacring the mannequins. The way Razel replied to Alexa looks like he is very annoyed. Well, it's not like he's not excited to hear the news that Alexa brought, but this keeps happening for a couple of hours now and most of the time, what he gets is a useless piece of information that serves him nothing. He's just, a bit tired at this point. They are worth mentioning indeed, it's good to know, but at this point, unless it's very important, he just doesn't care anymore. This time, it's a huge structure. Located thousands of kilometers in the south. According to the image, it seems to be a very huge castle. After this, a panel that shows an image of a certain castle appeared in front of Razel. After this, suddenly, Razel stopped what he was doing. His eyes became fixated on the floating image in front of him. He did not say anything but kept looking at the image. More time had passed, and he then broke into a peal of laughter. Damn! Got my hopes there for a second. I thought it was mine. To explain, back in Yggdrasil, Razel has a base in Nivelheim, obviously. He has multiple bases there, but he has one that looks just like the castle that is currently being shown to him by Alexa. Yes, at first glance, he thought that it was his, but he later realized that it was not due to some missing details. In any case. All right, we're going. In that case, can I remind you that? It probably is a dungeon, and given that I'm not fully powered yet, it might be dangerous. I'm quite aware, no worries. Then if you are, you most definitely should. Alexa, I'm prepared. Who do you take me for? Besides, it's time for some hands-on training. These dummies are starting to feel flat. Can you at least consider looking? Alexa, just point me to the location, and we'll decide what to do once we get there. Since I can use a gate spell now, if things are actually dire, I dip as fast as I can. Relax, I know what I'm doing. After this, a pause happened between the two for a couple of seconds. Alexa. But moments later. Understood. I hope you are right. Should I initiate fast travel? Yeah, obviously. Location has been locked. I'm right. Initiating fast travel sequence. Wait. What do you mean by fast tra? Razel didn't even have time to finish what he was trying to say as he suddenly disappeared from where he stood. Val. And the next thing he knew, he was now standing in the middle of a snowfield where a great storm rages. Grrrrrrrr. And in front of him, a towering monster stood. Why am I? After that, he was sent flying across the field. Chapter 76 Throughout these past years, Razel had forgotten many things already. Well, with all the uncountable events that occurred, no one can probably blame him for being forgetful. There are just so many of them and there's no way that he can keep tabs on everything. Especially with all the stress he's been dealing with lately. But Razel has some things that he absolutely must not forget. These things are so important and so crucial that forgetting them is basically out of the question. Some of these might put his life in danger if forgotten. That's how important it is. So with all that said, one can probably understand how frustrated Razel is when he realized that he managed to forget one of the most must-not-forget things in his life. And out of the must-not-forget, it's one of the crucial ones at that. And to make matters worse, that one thing is right in front of him right now, looking down on him with an unreadable gaze, making Razel pour out cold sweats. It's been a while now my love. Said the being on the throne as it stood up and approached Razel ever so slowly. The distance between them is not that great, but in Razel's mind. He greatly wishes that the distance could be longer. You've been gone for too long now. Maybe, if that's the case, he would be able to think of some ways to deal with the mess he's in right now. In fact, too long that you made me start thinking that something serious must have happened to you while you were out there. But that wish was just not possible at the moment since before he could think of anything, he started feeling his head being cupped by the being that just arrived in front of him. But looking at you right now, you seemed fine to me. Now, the two of them are facing each other eye to eye, and Razel, couldn't do anything about it. Well, you must have a pretty good reason right? Right. His ability to resist has been rendered useless for some reason. So now, tell me. Well, if he wants to, 
he actually can resist, but he chose to not do anything related to that because he's afraid of what might happen. What took you so long? Now, Razel is literally leaving his everything to fate itself. Underscore underscore. Back in Yggdrasil days, one day, Razel devised a plan for his ultimate safety. Ultimate safety for what? Well, for everything, and everyone that was about to come. Since the very beginning, Razel had this one particular ongoing quest from his main racial class, the Origin. It's a quest that requires him to kill his fellow Origins, the Hero and the Beast King. Now, doing that quest is a very easy task, especially right at the early phase of Yggdrasil when the Hero and the Beast King are still nothing but noobs, whilst Razel is already as strong as a high-leveled player. But Razel didn't do it. Instead, he made peace with the two. The three of them made a promise to each other that they would not pursue the origin quest. Why did he do that? Well, if Razel decides to do the quest that early, he will have a great problem. A problem that might ruin his future plans in the game. And he wouldn't want that. As mentioned, Razel can kill the two if he wants. The problem that Razel had been worrying about, is the consequence that comes after the quest is done. He will be an official enemy of the two other races. The humans, and demi-humans. Heteromorphics are not included but they can join the hunt as well so it's basically a threesome galore. That, wouldn't be good. And Razel knew that. The other two, Hero and Beast King, knew it as well, that's why the peace treaty met no resistance when Razel brought it up. That's why Razel decided to abandon this origin quest. Until he gets himself a thing that would ensure his safety even if he goes down that route that is. Which he did, given enough time. Well, it all started when Razel obtained the title, Prince of Nivelheim by completing a certain quest, which would be upgraded later on to King of Nivelheim when he got the World Champion class for the World of Nivelheim. It was then followed by him getting a map of the entire Nivelheim that was gifted to him by the devs. Add to this is a certain world item that he had, the World Egg. Yes, Razel's ultimate safety contains these ingredients. The events proceeded in this manner. One day, a certain rumor started going around Yggdrasil that Razel managed to complete the entirety of Nivelheim and that he had already seen it all. Which is both true and not actually. He has seen it all, but not completed it. He just saw all the contents that Nivelheim had, with the help of his friend Satoshi. That's all. He only managed to actually complete the entirety of Nivelheim in the later years, when he finally had the King of Nivelheim class and the map of Nivelheim. Talk about him clearing Nivelheim, his journey on that is quite not smooth to say the least. Well, he decided to do it all alone so that's not surprising. Well not that alone since he has a bunch of NPCs helping him throughout his journey but yet, a player's presence is still different. But in the end, after all the hardships, he finally managed to clear it all, or not. He cleared the world, but just in name. He didn't actually clear it all. There are still some uncleared places here and there but those places are not required for him to go if his only goal is to just complete Nivelheim, so since that's the case, he didn't bother doing the rest. But that's not the case for every uncleared place. There's this one place, located in the deepest of Nivelheim, a beautiful castle made of what looks like ice, and houses countless treasures. Very tempting indeed. But, there's one problem, there's a giant dragon on top of that countless treasures. And that dragon, is a world enemy. Now the reason why Razel avoided that place is pretty obvious. Until he managed to clear the world that is. Cause after he cleared Nivelheim, he came back to this very place with the goal of conquering it and finally laying down the final step for his ultimate safety. With the help of his NPCs, armed with the best items he got, and with a very, 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 subtle help from his friend Satoshi, he managed to defeat the dragon and clear the castle. Well, he mostly cheesed the dragon to death but he cleared it cleanly nonetheless. So with all that done, he finally started his ultimate safety plan. First safety is the world itself. Since he already cleared Nivelheim, he can basically go wherever he pleases now with the use of fast travel. A mechanic that gave him the ability to teleport instantly to the nearest stronghold, scattered around the entire Nivelheim. Second safety, the miasma that covered the entire world, made possible by the hex of the slighted goddess. Third, and his most ultimately dangerous weapon yet, ultimately dangerous to the point where Razel himself is even starting to question what he had just created. The Queen of Nivelheim. The Queen of Nivelheim is probably the most questionable project that Razel made. It's even more questionable than that moment when he decided to create Frankenstein. That's right, 
the Queen of Nivelheim is probably worse than Frank Henstein. Unbelievable! How can someone even top an abomination created by combining three literal world items? Well, Razel managed to do it, again. As to how? Well, it's a pretty simple process. It was made possible by the world enemy, Dragon, he defeated in the Ice Castle, and the world egg, and of course, another very, subtle assistance from his friend Satoshi. The creation process is like this. When he defeated the dragon, its essence was then left behind. Razel then brought out the world egg and made it absorb that very essence. Egg plus some essence, it was pretty obvious what's the outcome of this process. After that, Razel proceeded with the customization. It's a standard process, add all the good stuff and remove the bad stuff. Normally, this is not possible, but there is nothing to fear because Superman is always there to save the day. So, with all that said and done, Razel just waited for the process to go on. It didn't take that long before the world egg finally hatched, and the being that came out was obviously, the Queen of Nivelheim. Celebration will be made cause it was finally done. At least, that's what Razel thought at that very moment. Though it was cut short cause, it seems that there's one miscalculation on Razel's part here. The being he created, the Queen of Nivelheim, is not branded as an NPC, unlike what he expected. But a fricking world enemy. To be continued. Chapter 77 Razel slowly opened his eyes with a grunt due to a slight headache he was currently feeling. He just woke up. Of course, the being that Razel has now become doesn't require things such as sleeping, but it's not like it's impossible. Unlike undead creatures, he can sleep if he wants to. This room is so unnecessarily huge, Razel muttered to himself as he slowly looked around, probably scanning the room he was currently in. In doing so, he found out that he was in some sort of bedroom. An extremely huge and very luxurious bedroom. Sigh. Looking around he also notices the situation he's currently in. Well, it's not like he's unaware of it, he just decided to not think of it for a moment. Razel sighed heavily once again as he finally decided to face the current situation at hand. Which is him lying down on a bed, all while bare naked. Well, given Razel's new body which looks perfect from every angle, he did not mind being naked at all. Or at least, not as much as before. But the real problem comes after that. Cause, with just a slight turn of his head, beside him, there he finds his supposedly wife, Isabella. And the most noticeable thing is that, she was also naked. Thankfully, she is currently sleeping deeply, so Razel could safely look at her without sh asterisking himself. But, as much as he wanted to seize the moment and leave, he sadly couldn't cause Isabella was hugging him and using his left arm as a body pillow, practically locking him in place. In any case, to make the long story short, Razel basically did the thing with Isabella. The very thing that most lovers do. Segs. Now this situation is quite unreal for Razel actually. No, not for the reason that he just slept with someone. Razel had been in a relationship before, and even though it's been a while since he last did it, it didn't change the fact that he was already an experienced man. What's unreal for him is the fact that the things that happened, just happen. What a mess this is. Razel can only grunt as he starts remembering the scenes that happened which ultimately led to his current situation. Flashback. How am I supposed to do this? Razel thought to himself. Back in Yggdrasil, Isabella doesn't have loyalty to anyone, unlike normal NPCs. What she has is a favorability meter. To summarize everything, the higher her favorability meter is, the better it is for Razel. But the thing is, her favorability meter tends to decrease when left alone for some time. That's why Razel goes to her every now and then to make sure that very thing doesn't happen. Though he doesn't really know what would happen if her favorability of him goes to zero, well he's not brave enough to know. Thankfully, raising her favorability is fairly easy. All he needs to do is just select the right answer when a question prompt appears above her. It's like dialogue choices on a dating sim game. This is basically the only way he interacts with her inside the Yggdrasil. But now, where things such as a preset dialogue don't exist, and the words that come out of Isabella are preset no more, he becomes stuck. The fact that her current favorability level seems to be dangerously low and that Razel made her look like a death from Akame GA kill is not helping at all. Razel, at the current moment, really needs to rack up his brain for an immediate solution before it's too late because Isabella's mood seems so eager. This was shown back when Razel first arrived in the Ice Palace's vicinity. At first, Razel thought that he was sent flying away by the monster he encountered upon arriving, 
but when he noticed that he'd been flying for quite a long time, he immediately realized that he was not sent flying by an attack, but by someone that's pulling him from somewhere. Unfortunately, Razel who's currently nerfed, did not manage to resist the pulling cause he was being overpowered by a large margin, and even Alexa herself could not give him an immediate solution. He can use some drastic measures indeed but, held off cause he decided to see how things would play out first. Whoever or whatever is causing this, Razel could tell that it is surely powerful. If left behind, it might cause him quite trouble in the long run. That's why he needed to know the current situation first before taking any action. Well, it didn't take that long for him to know who exactly was pulling him. In fact, it was an answer that he regretted asking for to come. So all of that is what happened when Razel first arrived here, and the events that followed are the ones that led to the current scenario. Actually, ever since Razel arrived in front of Isabella he hasn't said a single word. Probably the reason why she looks more agitated as time passes by. Indeed, Razel is acting a bit weird, but that's for a reason. A good reason. The moment he realized how critical his situation was, Razel instinctively activated a bunch of spells and skills. Mind isolation, perception boost, intel grave, etc. These spells and skills boost his mind, maximizing what little time he has to think from his point of view. In short, all this time, Razel is living in slow motion, discussing what's the best response he can make with Alexa. Alexa? How are the things on your side? Razel hurriedly asked his AI companion inside his mind. I'm nearly done with it. Ugh, I can't wait any longer, I've been on pause for a long time now. Razel agitatedly said as he noticed that if he kept acting like a mute, according to Isabella's current creepy expression, she might get tired of waiting and then proceed to head crushing. But. It's still incomplete. As you said, it's nearly done already. Just shoot it then work on the missing parts along the way. If things come to worse, then I'll improvise. Alexa. Understood. At your will. But if we do it this way, then I'll need to notify you that I need your permission for some. Whatever it is, will it cause me any direct harm? UMM, most likely no. That doesn't seem to be the case. A all right, just do whatever it is and start immediately. Understood. So with Razel's full permission, their so-called plan, finally started. Initiating random bullsh asterisk t go. Protocol. That name sucks. You should have picked a better name. Meanwhile, Razel who's watching from the back, starts commenting on every panel he sees like some Karen in a park. Though Alexa seems to be unbothered by his remarks. Calculating the best path for the next sequences of action based on the current situation. Whoa, we are getting precise. I like that. Scanning Miss Isabella's facial structure, breathing pattern, body language, and nature to identify her exact characteristics. UMM. I don't think you need to go that deep just to dot. Character identified. According to the book Start Your AV Career, Miss Isabella seems to fall in the submissive and breedable category. Hey. Searching the database for the most effective actions when it comes to dealings with Miss Isabella's character. Wait, Alexa. I don't think you're searching in the right database section. The recommended actions in the book Fifty Shades of Grey seem to be the best for the current scenario. OSH asterisk T. The path of action has been established. Oi. Initiating autopilot mode. Wait autopilot? I didn't agree to Razel was about to rebuke but a moment when Alexa asked for his permission about something and his agreeing to it without even thinking about it, suddenly appeared in his mind. Cancelling some of the currently active skills and spells to resume the normal flow of time. Alexa. Wait. All necessary steps have been prepared. This is not a good idea. Protocol action will now commence. Nuuu. End of flashback. The things that happened after that were quite wild and unexpected in Razel's opinion. He didn't know that Isabella, even as her creator, had that kind of, personality. Once again Alexa made him realize how amazing of a system she is. Though he can't lie that she gave him quite a scare. Well, nobody can probably blame him since what are the odds that his acting like a drunkard dishbag of a husband that likes nothing but to abuse his wife is the way that will get him out of a life and death situation? Almost never. I hope this ends soon, Razel muttered as he glanced at the open window near him with a tired expression. Whatever, let's just think about this stuff later. For now. Alexa. Fill me in. Just after Razel said that, Alexa's window appeared right in front of him. Okay. Earlier, 
when Razel was in the middle of his business with Isabella, he suddenly heard Alexa's notification prompt all of a sudden. This could only mean that something important happened within his system that needed his attention. But since he was still in the middle of doing something, he decided to just check it out later. Besides, Razel knew it was not an emergency that required immediate attention, so he decided to chill out and finish his business first. But now that he's doing nothing, he finally decided to know what the notification was about. A couple of hours ago, a third party was detected within the area of our link on one of our ongoing sequences. A third party? On an ongoing sequence? What sequence is that? It's the mapping sequence. Okay. So what did you do? Did you get rid of the third party already? No. I detected that the breach in our link had no harmful intent, so I decided to observe first. Weird, but I'm still alive so whatever. Razel wanted to reprimand Alexa that he was being a bit reckless but he was too tired to argue right now. So, what you found out? I found out that. The mapping sequence had been 100% completed. What? The map of Nivelheim is now available for viewing on the map. Yeah, I get that part, but you said that it'll take a year or so before it's completed right? That's right. However, the third party link assisted us in this matter and tremendously enhanced the processing speed of our mapping sequence. Looking at the floating window panels, Razel can't help but have a deep frown while listening to this. Well, what just happened is very beneficial for him hell, due to this, some of his plans that are scheduled to be done in the later years due to the original estimated completion of his mapping sequence, can now be put in motion. He did not have to wait for a year anymore. But, an unknown third party that's aware of his plans and existence is quite a scare in the gut. Razel is literally in an unknown universe right now where many unknown variables reside, no one can blame him for being too cautious. Did you find out who that third party is? Razel asked a question, just in case Alexa took a sneaky action against that third party. But before she could even voice out her reply, a voice rang beside him and answered that question for him. It's me. SH asterisk T. Razel almost jumped out of bed as he suddenly heard Isabella's voice in his ear. I noticed what you're doing. You're gathering information, which is weird honestly. Imagine a king who doesn't know his land. That's pretty funny. Isabella said in a teasing manner while looking straight into Razel's eyes. Anyways, good morning. Oh. Yuh, thank you. Razel said awkwardly. Ah. I mean. Gee good morning to you too. Honey. PFT. Listening to her husband talking to her in a conflicted speech pattern made Isabel laugh out loud. Why are you talking like that? Are you teasing me? Realizing what he just did, Razel faked a cough and then apologized. Damn, this is so awkward, what's happening to me? After that, silence covered the two. Though both of them kept staring at each other as if they were in a staring contest, no one was voicing out their thoughts. One is afraid to make the situation more awkward and the other one is enjoying the situation as it gets more awkward. But that silence didn't last long as a few seconds later, Isabella decided to break the ice. I'm hungry. Isabella paused as she rolled off to the side of the bed and then stood up. She doesn't have any clothes on but she seems not to care. Come, let's have breakfast. Isabella then proceeds to walk out of the room without waiting for Razel's response. Razel on the other hand, was still left speechless. Seeing the closing door, Razel could do nothing but make one last sigh. Now that I think about it, I'm also getting hungry, Razel said lazily. That's probably why I cannot think properly. Yeah, that must be it. So with that thought in mind, he decided to stand up and hurriedly follow Isabella outside. Thanks for listening. <laughs>